Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another Plenty video. So today we are going to be going through and overhauling my perlite propagation box here. This is what it's currently looking like. I will show you the inside momentarily. But this propagation box I have not opened or really done anything. I, I All I've done is toss the odd thing in here, but I haven't removed anything or really checked on the plants in here in many months. So I'm very excited to see what's going on. I can see like a few things that are very fun. I'm gonna start off by pulling everything out of here and then I think we're just gonna sort it out on my potting mat here because that's just gonna be easiest rather than trying to like have the camera inside this big tall box the whole time. I will give you a little look though before I start pulling everything out. So I have not done anything. This is what we are working with. There are a lot of monster dubia <laughs> growing up the sides. Uh, yeah, some cutie looking philodendron. These both look like majestic, which is very interesting because I thought I only had one majestic in here. Maybe one of them is mame though. Honestly, I don't know. We'll have to pull every one out and inspect. It looks like there's some things that need to be just like tossed that haven't grown or have started rotting as well. So yeah, okay, um, let's just start pulling things out. By the way, before I get too deep into this, I just wanna say that if you're wondering about the setup and the care of these perlite propagation boxes, if you're new to this idea, I will link some videos down below that I've done on those topics specifically. I think that I actually have a whole perlite propagation playlist, so you can find that down in the description box. But for now, I'm just going to... There, that's perfect actually. All right, I'm just gonna start pulling everybody out of here, gently. Even the ones that aren't rooted yet, I'm still gonna remove because I'm actually gonna be setting up a different propagation box. I'm, I'm gonna be completely disassembling this. Um, we will get into that more, but yeah, everybody's gonna be coming out whether they are rooted or not. Oh my goodness, <gasps> my syndapsis. Oh wow, I'm so happy about this because I honestly thought that I was gonna lose my syndapsis silver hero. Even the one in my cabinet is like hanging on by a thread and I, I threw this in the propagation box hoping that it would root and I'd be able to have another chance at growing it. And wow, it rooted super, super well. So thank goodness for that. See, it's always fun like going through this box, you know? Basically things get thrown in here and then I have a surprise six to 12 months later when I start digging through. Oh my goodness, another one, you guys. Another little synopsis. I think that, no, maybe it is Silver Hero. I thought maybe it was Exotica for a second, but I think that it might be Silver Hero as well. That's the thing, like this unorganized method that I am using is not great for identification. I have a lot of wet sticks and just like even grown plants that I don't know what they are because it's harder to tell when they're younger and just putting out like small leaves. So that's, you know, the downside of this chaotic prop box situation. Okay, this one I'm very intrigued. Oh my gosh, <gasps> part of the stem is rotted on this but I think it's okay. The rest is healthy and I can just cut that off. We'll do that later. But this is either, uh, I, I'm assuming that this is, actually, I don't know. I actually don't know. <gasps> what is that? What is that? I don't know if you can see that. There's like a little spot of variegation, like sport variegation on this leaf. I think that this is philodendron majestic. Yeah, it must be majestic actually, it has to be. This is for sure philodendron majestic, I think. Okay, very cool. Surprises in here already. Um, okay. I'm gonna pull out the other one that also looks like Philodendron Majestic. 
you know what i think that there's two majestics in here because one was from my plant and one was from a wet stick that i started growing wait or is that in my no that would be in here yeah okay there is two majestics in here so this is the other philodendron majestic right here that one's a little bit smaller i'll probably be potting those together so i'll just leave them there oh i think that there's a third one i think that there is a third one. Oh, it looks kind of weird okay philodendron majestic number three i didn't know that i had so many of them in here but i guess i do I have so many Monstera dubia wild little vines in here and people are going to hate me but I'm probably not going to keep those. I'm probably just going to toss them because I have like 10 dubia cuttings rooting right now of like big leaf cuttings. So yeah, <laughs> just going to pull them all out. It is very cool how they were like climbing the side of the prop box though. Wow, there is a lot of them. Okay, I've got something here that looks like an epipremnum of some type. There's actually a few. I don't know if they're Cebu Blue. They're either Cebu Blue or my No ID Epipremnum. They're just little guys. So I'll put them right there. I think that those are actually Cebu Blue um, wet sticks that I put in here because I remember doing that in a past video, throwing the wet sticks in there. So I guess some of them have grown. So that's nice. Some of them don't really have a lot of roots, but that's okay. Put them all together anyways this is a syndapsis i don't know which type it doesn't really have many markings on it maybe it was from my exotica or something i'm not sure same with this one another syndapsis i can't remember if i put cuttings from my satin jade or my jade satin in here i may have another one. Oh, this one's like rotted i'm just gonna put the rotted ones like over here is this rotted? No. Okay. This, I think, is an medium. Medium. But the stick doesn't look great. I don't think I need to keep that. I have no idea what this is. It might be a little philodendron micans, but I'm not sure. That one is another Cebu Blue. Here we have that. Uh, syndapsis again. This. Oh. It's a little baby subastatum. I guess I'm still finding. Or no, I think that this might be Mexi Mexicanum. Because I did chop up my Mexicanum a while ago. So that might be what this guy is. I already have two of those. So I don't know if I need to keep that. But... Another syndapsis. Okay, now the most recent things that I put in here, I did put a bunch of sticks recently. What was that from though? It was something that we did together in a video. Oh, my Monstera subpinata. So there's a few wet sticks in here and I think that that's probably, some of those are from the Monstera subpinata. There's a lot of wet sticks that are just like rotted as well. <laughs> I'm gonna put the wet sticks there. And the very most recent thing that I put in here is little tiny Peperomia prostrata cuttings. And it looks like two out of three of them rotted. So I only have one left that little guy 
and it hasn't rooted yet. <laughs> so I don't know if that's going to make it, but you know, hopefully. No idea what those were. <laughs> kind of gross. Okay, so that's everything, and I won't lie, it honestly looks pretty disgusting in here. I'll boil this perlite and reuse it, but yeah, I'm not gonna be putting anything back in here like that. All right, so I'm just gonna set up a second potting mat for us to do our repotting on. And I've got a bunch of small containers here that are going to accommodate our new little baby plants. So what I'm going to do is pot these all up individually um, and then I'm going to put them back into that uh, bin, that clear bin, but I'm going to like take all the perlite out and clean it and everything. So it's still going to be like a propagation box with my baby plants, but it's not going to be, they're not all going to be sharing the same bed of perlite. They're going to be in their own separate containers. So yeah. Okay, so let's start off with the easy ones. We have three philodendron majestic, and I'm gonna be giving one of the larger containers to that one, of course. So do this guy. I've got my potting mix here beside me. nice thing about perlite propagation is that you don't have to worry about getting it off of the roots like it's fine it's not gonna uh, increase the risk of rot like something like sphagnum moss would so it's just very simple to um, repot when you do perlite propagation so I really like that I think I might actually keep this larger one separate so I'll do these two together Little babies. <clears throat> I love Philodendron Majestic. It's one of my favorite plants. I feel like I'm always posting about it on Instagram um, because I'm just, you know, such a big fan. They're just so beautiful. Like the silver is so striking, especially in the sun. They just shimmer and sparkle so much. Uh, the only thing that kind of sucks is that they lose their silver as they mature, which is, you know, kind of disappointing because I love the silver so much, but that's okay. That's okay. Just enjoy them when they're smaller. It's actually kind of nice because a lot of plants, you really like want them to get big and size up and get mature. But this one, you can appreciate it so much, even when it's young, because of how beautiful the silver is. So that is our first one done, Philodendron Majestic. And then I'm gonna quickly do the second Philodendron Majestic as well. That one's actually got a pretty big root system, so I'm gonna go with another, the same size pot actually. Um, so. Oh, there's some rotten ones. Maybe I should. Okay, I need to get my snippers so that we can deal with the, the rotten parts. Keep bothering my philodendron gloriosum every time I walk by. Sorry. Okay, so I'm just gonna chop off the rotten roots. I think it's only that one, actually. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's a weird part, whoops. There's a weird part here too, so let's just. Okay, so. That one is all potted up now as well. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead with the 
um, Silver Hero, oh my goodness, Silver Hero synopsis. Um, and I'm going to pot these ones all together. There's four, or no, there's three cuttings, but four leaves. Wait, this one doesn't have roots. Shoot. Okay, never mind. This one needs to continue propagating, so I don't even know if he's going to end up rooting. He looks kind of sad, but I'm still going to give it a go. Anyways, these two, I will. I'm still not sure if these are both. Yeah, I think they are. I think they're both Silver Hero. So I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do this pot for them. don't know why I struggle with this plant so much like yeah it's just so hard for me to get it to grow and to put out a nice leaf or nice leaves when it grows very very difficult definitely one of my hardest plants for me okay the stem looks weird I think it's rotting. I think it's just kind of gross. Okay. He's got a lot of wild roots that I'm trying to get to stay under. that guy is all finished hopefully this plant will do okay for me i've struggled with it so much next i think i'll go ahead and do all of my little cebu blue cuttings i do eventually just want to combine these into the mother pot of my cebu blue but for now i think i'll just continue growing them in here until they have a couple more leaves doesn't have roots. I've got a lot of cuttings in this one. So an update about my plants, in case anyone was wondering, still battling flat mites, mealybugs, and spider mites. Um, still trying to get everyone treated with sulfur. Um, I'm just kind of like making my way around the house and treating as many plants as possible. Um, and yesterday i found a thrip or thrips or whatever it's supposed to whatever just one is supposed to be i found one on my philodendron mcdowell and you guys oh my goodness i was just saying like a week ago that i was so thankful that i didn't have thrips and now i found them on my plant so that makes four different types of pests in here and y'all know how I feel about thrips. Like, I will take any past except for thrips. I'm so, like, I'm just so over it at this point that I'm like, you know what? I don't even care. Like, whatever. Um, obviously, I do. But, like, I mean, what am I going to do? I'm already stressed and I'm already treating for a bunch of pests. Um, however, this, I read on Google um, that apparently sulfur kills thrips as well. 
So I'm really, really praying that that's true because that would make my life so much easier if I can just do the sulfur and kill like multiple pests with one thing, you know? So still really not great news because thrips are very hard to get rid of. You have to treat for a long time. Um, so yeah, but right now my game plan is just to keep going with my sulfur treatments. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing, but yeah, very interesting times. Okay, there's my little Cebu Blue pot. These ones look really green, I think because they're getting light from uh, grow lights. Still cute though. Okay, so now we have my Syndapsis, which I don't know which kind these are. They might even be different types. We're gonna pot those up and then we have my uh, Mexicanum that we're gonna pot up and then I think that we're done for the potting portion. We have these wet sticks that will be going in a new propagation box and my little string of turtles. And yeah, okay. Okay, little baby syntapsis pot. Now, last but not least, the Mexicana. Use this little black pot for him. Okay, I think out of all the plants, this is the cutest one. Look at how little he is in there. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now these guys are all potted. We have six pots here. These are rotted, not keeping those. Um, and then these still need to be propagated over here. So what's my next move? I think that my next move is cleaning out that big propagation box so that's what I'm gonna go do now okay I'm in the process of taking the perlite out of there and boiling it I'm gonna have to do two rounds so this is the first one but while I'm waiting I think we might as well go water those little propagations over here okay I'm just gonna spray them all down in the shower and then leave them here for a few minutes while I'm out there dealing with the prop box so that they'll have time to drain and everything Okay, do you see this part that looks like variegation? I think it's probably just because of the humidity that part of the leaf went translucent because look, you can see my finger, but wow, it still looks cool anyways. Now while my perlite continues to boil on the stove here, I'm just going to put together a little mini sphagnum moss propagation box. I knew that my kiwi obsession would pay off one day. This is a reused kiwi container and it's perfect for propagation. So I just wet the moss with a little bit of Super Thrive um, infused water um, and then kind of wrung it out so that it's not like stopping wet. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and pop all of my propagations in here. I'm just kind of burying the node under the moss. Um, but for the sticks, honestly, if you just lay them on top, I find that if the humidity is high enough, they'll just push out roots. I try to see where the root looks like it's going to come out and put that facing down. But honestly, it's not a big deal either way because you can just flip them over if the root does start coming out from a different direction. But yeah, just putting them all in here and it honestly fit them perfectly, so I am very happy with this.
you can see the finished result. Look at how cute it is. Oh my goodness, those little tiny baby Peperomia prostrata are so cute, I can't get over it. And after that, I just scrubbed down the prop box so that I can put everybody back inside. All right, so here is my clean propagation box. It's so weird to see this empty. I'm so used to seeing it filled up with perlite and plants. Um, it's all clean now though. The lighting is very different because the sun just decided to come out, which is very nice, but yeah, it, it does make it a little bit difficult to film. Um, okay, let's... Okay, as much as I'm loving the sunshine, I did have to close the blinds a little bit. So all I'm gonna be doing is just putting the babies in here. And then they're gonna be able to continue to establish themselves and grow with the benefit of the added humidity of the box and being under the grow lights. I'm gonna keep this in the same spot and everything. Um, yeah, let me put these in and then I'll talk a little bit about why I'm wanting to do it this way now. And then of course we have the ones that still need to root in a little sphagnum moss box there. And the reason that I decided to um, go with sphagnum moss is just because some of those have been in perlite for a while and weren't rooting so I thought you know might as well try a different medium um, I really could have done either but also this has holes in the bottom so it's just easier for the sphagnum to stay moist because it wouldn't be able to have like a layer of water on the bottom for the perlite so sphagnum just worked the best for this and I think that that is going to be just fine okay wow look how satisfying that is it looks so good. I feel so much more organized and this just, yeah, I'm so much happier with this. It feels a little bit like the end of an era because I've had that prop box going for probably two years now. So, I mean, I'm still propagating. It's just a lot different. So the reason that I wanted to get rid of the perlite propagation box is number one, I'm just not propagating. Whoa, almost knocked down my other camera. I'm just not propagating as much anymore and the plants that I am propagating a lot of the time they tend to be larger plants that I will either do water propagation in like a jar or something or I'll also go for perlite but in in their own container like in their own cup or jar just because they're larger plants and can't be put in a box like this and also I just didn't love how messy I mean I could have organized it and you know labeled everything and kept it nice but <laughs> unfortunately my brain is just does not operate that way so it just always would end up a mess for me um, and just like, I don't know, it was just obviously like get kind of gross over time with the algae and stuff, which is whatever, that's just what happens with plant stuff. Um, I'm not saying I'll never go back to the perlite propagation box. I'm sure that I will have another one one day, maybe when I have more space or maybe even I'll, I'll, um, what's the word? Yeah, I guess revert this back to a perlite propagation box. Um, but for now, I'm really happy to just be going this route. I'm still gonna keep the lid on it and everything, so it's um, kind of gonna be the same, but yeah, it just feels more organized, you know, having the plants in their own pots and then just having that one little propagation tray that I can keep an eye on. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this and really excited to watch these baby plants grow. It's almost like a little rehab box, you know, to help start off baby plants and restart plants. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like the route that I've gone um, or if you have any questions, I would love to chat with you. Don't forget to like this video and also make sure you are subscribed for more planty content. I have a ton of content planned for the rest of this month, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, we got, we've got a lot of stuff going on. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.